What's up, guys? Sean Black at FM Evolution, and we are back with our fearless leader, Jim Robinson. Hey. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, good to be back, man. Thank you. Let's do this. Friday. It's Friday. We're excited for I love Friday. leadership. Yes. Fridays are great. Gives me an opportunity to get fired up for Saturday. Got lots to do yes. this weekend. It was funny. I was listening to a session this morning, and they, they changed it to uh, uh, TGIM. Thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Monday. And I'm like, man, that aligns <laughs> with me so well. I've given, so Jim Robinson. I've given so many talks about that. You know, I dislike Fridays because everybody feels like they're just done. Yeah. And I'm feeling like I'm just not done. And so money rolls in. Everyone's feeling like, geez, I got to go back to work. Come on. I'm like, man, what a great opportunity. I get to go to work again on Monday because everyone's going to be here and I get to see people. So it's just a different mindset for me. I love that. And that is what we're going to be talking about today is that feeling of going back and connecting with people. And, uh, you know, we've had quite a bit of change over the last couple of years. A little with, bit. A little bit, you know, with how business is done, how we go into the office. Do we go in the office? Are we now completely disconnected? There's so many things that have been happening, um, you know, that I think there is a real need to talk about connecting with your teams. It's we were, we're pretty disconnected. We're disconnected and it's really started, you know, not even just in the last couple of years, it's been decades of this kind of building to where we are. Um, it's, you know, especially over the last few years. So a lack of connection between coworkers, I think we all can agree can, can, can lead to burnout. It, it can it low employee morale uh, and, and not great performance. So it's pretty important. So we're gonna we're gonna tackle that today, Jim Robinson. Let's solve this problem because we could do this in about fifteen minutes. One podcast at a time, solving the world problems. <laughs> there, that's that's why we're here. That's what we do. Let's do this. That's what we do. So I want to talk about a little bit about technology. Okay. Because you, we're on you're in Phoenix and I am in San Diego right now. So technology is allowing us to connect, and that's great. There's lots of advances in technology. Uh, but how do you feel it is impacting us as a whole, as a company, when it comes to being kind of disconnected? You know, disconnect from each other really started several years ago. It isn't COVID. I know a lot of folks are blaming COVID the last two years and the complexities of that. Society has been shifting apart for several years now because they we've just become less tolerant. Uh, we're less accepting. We have opinions that now make us somehow or another an authority over somebody else. Mm. And so for years now, I've been watching this. I would say, uh, for me personally, I would say in the last 12, 12-ish years, I've watched society kind of grow apart. They've, they've developed a hatred or an anger or at least a perceived hatred or anger because of diversity and opposition. And it couldn't be farther from accurate, but we've embraced this for some reason that there's a line and you have to be on one side or the other of this line instead of being open and accepting. And so for 12, 13 years, I've watched this divide. And then after this gets crazier and crazier, then COVID showed up. And now we have to absolutely separate. Bam. And so it only, it was the cherry on top of the nasty cake that's killing us. <laughs> and the reality is, is that it was really just kind of the, the straw to break the camel's back. So this has been going on for a long time. Yeah. I think during that entire time, we've also watched society as a whole yearn to connect, to be community driven, you know, tribal as it's called. It's, we have to connect in some way. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to go out in, in an RV for several weeks, actually, and I worked remotely in different areas of the United States. I went and seen people, coached people, seen family, and so on. And I learned in that, as I went out on that journey, my discovery was I went and seen family that was in very remote, rural areas that wanted to be, you know, at some point wanted to be out there to be away from people. And I found that going to see these people was as much as they wanted to be away from people, it was really the absolute opposite. Because when we would show up, they didn't want you to leave. They wanted to cook dinner. They wanted you to stay the night. They wanted you to stay for the weekend. Across the board, every single person that I connected with that was in a very rural, disconnected way 
was really truly craving being reconnected. I've also talked about this with different companies that work remote and they're like, yeah, it's the greatest thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. From, uh-huh. A, from a self-serve standpoint. Yeah. Cause there's a set of freedoms that come along with that. But the reality is, is they're all still very much craving being connected. So they'll set up events to make sure you can go meet on a job site, on a, on a store, on a roof. So everybody, we all were by design. We have to have people, we have to connect. So discovery is, is it's been going on for a few years. And now I think more than ever, probably at an all time high, certainly in my 56 years of life, people want to love and be loved. We even wrote a core value in, at CGP for this, that we will welcome love and we'll give love no, con- no conditions, no strings attached because people want to love you. Yeah. And they want to. Don't give them reasons to hate you. Give them reasons to love you. Allow them to, and that's reason enough. So I think we're going to connect a lot differently. I think there's a big focus push on this. We've certainly done it internally before COVID. COVID just made things more complicated for us. But before that, we were making a diligent effort to celebrate people. We do the birthday thing and some other stuff. That's really important. Celebrate each other, man. Just stop tearing each other down. Yeah. There are a lot of business owners right there. I think they're going, love? <laughs> yeah. Well, we were founded in California, man, and it, it can be complicated how we That's exactly. Things. Yeah, I how, know. How we phrase things, as in some other states, the same thing. But, but the, yeah, the reality is, is that's really what we want. Why not talk about it? Let's embrace Why the thing. And it, everything worth having is can be a fight. It's uphill. It's on the top. It's not at the bottom. It's not in the toilet. It's nowhere else but at the top. Let's keep working. Let's let's climb for this. Let's love yeah. each other. Let's talk about that. Let's say, geez, man, I love you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Let's get doing things better. Let's do this together. We have different opinions, but let's go. Yeah. You know, we had, uh, I had an amazing opportunity to spend time with you in Orlando. And we, we learned a lot of stuff at an event. And, and um, one of the things that I took back from that and in this conversation about love is uh, I'm telling my, my buddy friends, Hey, I love you, man. <laughs> and they, and they're like, and they, they're doing it now too. They're like, Hey, yeah. I love you. They, man. they say, lose my it's number. Crazy. Lose my number. No, they don't. Don't, don't. don't follow me. <laughs> <You're weird. laughs> Some of them will. No, you know, honestly, it's weird that you say that. No, they don't. They didn't. And to your, this is to your point. Yeah. Like they just like, they're like, Oh crap. I love you too, dude. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's really cool. So yeah, I, I love that answer. And I think you're absolutely right. And we, and people were craving it. They are, I know they are, I, I, you know, I, I, we've all been experiencing that. Um, this is a hard subject because I, the reality is that COVID changed us. COVID, COVID changed us. We don't do the same thing. And there are people who are remote. And they're working in, you know, in a situation more and more common. If you look at how people are hiring, what they're requesting, what they think they want, it still is. I want to be or want to be remote. So there are there are people, there are leaders out there that are dealing with remote teams. As a leader, you know, what is your advice for those companies that, you know, that have remote workers, and you know that may be that that may feel disconnected or lost without constant collaboration how do we how do we deal with how do we fix this well in from a communication standpoint just that alone we know the language you know hearing auditory is eight or ten percent i forget the number that they claim is the communication we hear so if if words are really only eight or ten percent and 30 40 percent is truly reading each other hearing each other feeling each other's presence we got to get together and if you have a lot of remote workers, you got to figure out how to put a plan together to connect. That means meeting somewhere. It's a lunch. It's a dinner. It's a activity. It's get a Airbnb for the, for the day, bring the whiteboard, have a discussion, set an agenda, but connect, break bread, have a coffee, mm. drink a water. You got to do something. You got to get together. 
remote is great. It's a great way to serve self and all of your needs. You can clean your house, you can fix the garage, and you can get a bunch of paperwork done. That's exciting. That's fun. That's cool. A lot of people love it. <laughs> a lot of people love that. But the reality is, is they still want to connect. Let's help them. Let's spend time. I want to connect. I'm going to find out how to figure out how to get to you. The planes fly all around. Just go get on one. Get on whatever you got to do. Get in your car. Do something. You got to go connect to people because they deserve to connect and you deserve to be connecting to others as well. You got, we got to make an effort. Yeah. I think that is the power of breaking bread. Phenomenal. It just changes people. It's biblical. It is biblical. Let's do that. It, let's do that. I don't, why not? That makes sense. It just, it, it does. It just changes the relationship. You know, you can have email correspondence. And by the way, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not a fan of like reading or writing email and, and the emotion that did that it's attached to or not attached to it. Cause it's all about the other person who's receiving it and how they feel. This eliminates that, man. You're there with them. You're, you're breaking bread, you're connecting and you can get months worth of uh, accomplishment done and an hour worth of, breaking bread it's, it's just incredible you you can feel yeah. love yeah and you can love them at a profound level that you are not going to do on a zoom meeting so yeah. you you got to find a way to have meetings you got to have a way to off-site just go get an airbnb take the house take a big house set in the living room and connect we're getting ready yeah. to do this, by the way, here in the next few weeks. We're, we're bringing an entire team that we're just going to go do an Airbnb because it's not disrupted. You got the amenities of a home. It's comfort like a home. You can rent whatever level you can afford. You can get you can get the lowest and the highest in it. You figure out your budget. But it's a great opportunity to connect. You feel like you're at home, and there's no greater love than what is at home. Yeah. I think it's interesting, you know. <clears throat> there, I think there's a need for conversations. I want to ask you, like, how do you start that conversation with your team um, about helping them reconnect with each other, but also their friends, their families? Like, when do you do that? You just, just do, huh? You just do. I mean, take initiative, you know, figure out how to get an hour out of your calendar and be specific, you know, very intentional on your calendar that you're going to, I was giving a talk the other day about, you know, Friday, because goal setting result oriented people, sometimes when they first start doing that, it's challenging. So I always use Friday as your, as your example. I said, if beer and pizza is your thing at six o'clock on Friday, put it on your calendar. That became your goal for the week. Now follow through, invite some people, go connect, hang out, have a beer, eat some pizza. Wow. You're going to be better for it. More importantly, the people you invited, they're going to be more impacted than you are. Mm -hmm. because they feel loved because you invited them spend time doing that and set one goal just go have beer and pizza if that's what it takes you know something simple it doesn't have to be complex yeah i think a lot of people may not realize and this happens to me if i'm working uh remote or uh you know out of the office or even on travel and i'm not connecting with people that i'm like man i'm especially when i travel i'm like I'm tired, man. I am really tired. Like what happened? And I think there's a difference. And I was, I was listening to one of the authors that we, that we follow about from being fatigued and then being exhausted. And you brought this up to me before you're like, man. Uh, and that's why I got these guys right here is like when you're traveling, all the noise and all that stuff, uh, it can, you really fatigue you, but you're not tired. And a lot of people think, Hey man, I need a vacation for my vacation. You know, like I, I spent so much time out, you know, alone on a beach. I'm just, I'm just wiped. Uh, I felt like I need to take more time off. No, 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 no. <laughs> right. It's like, not that you need to take time off. It's like you, you need to reconnect with people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you, when you take a vacation and then you have to take a day off or when you travel for education, you have to take a day off one, you're not doing it right. You're supposed to be engaging people. You're supposed to be having a good time. That's why we're out there trying to decompress. I always say the greatest for me, it doesn't matter where I'm at. 
And a matter of fact, the last time I went to Cabo, I used that example. I connected to a guy from New York that's an electrician. I talked to a guy that's a framer in uh, Sacramento, all just floating around in the pool. And because it's just in my blood. It's, I'm a fixer. I'm, I'm a builder. I'm a service guy. And you just gravitate. Hey, what do you do? And you automatically start connecting to people. But you do that while you're away and you feel energized when you come back. You don't have to decompress. You don't have to take time away. So for me, I don't take time off. But when I travel, I usually am high. I come back on a high. I feel inspired. I got some exposure, some experience, some education, some opportunity. And I'm on a high. My endorphins are up. I'm going at it. And I'm an early riser. So I stay early. I go in. It's, uh, I don't know, it's travel doesn't exhaust me like that. What yeah. I do on travel sometimes, if I'm partying, I'm hanging out with a bunch of people, that can fatigue us, but that's just, that's just abuse of the body. That's not, not education, not opportunity. It's none of that. It's, it's an abuse thing. We have to control that as well. So I get energized when I come back from places. Yeah. I think it's interesting. We look at, especially with, with people being so disconnected right now that we look at the team and, you know, we think, well, that guy needs a day off. God, he needs a day off. We need to get this, you know, some time off. And they're like, and they're telling themselves, I need some time off. You know, uh, I need to go home. I just want to stay at home all day long and, yeah. and, and, and binge. You know, I, I couldn't, I don't, I can't speak into when that kind of came on to people, but when, when things are rough, that's when you go all in for me it should be for everybody, but it is for me. (laughs) When we have that 90 day checkout thing, we all check out at about 90 days and we check out for 10 minutes or 10 days or 10 months at 90 days. And then boom, we're, and then we go home. We want to sit at home. We want to do something that's one self-sabotaging and it'll keep us down instead of go straight at it. If the fire starts, you run through the fire because on the other side is water. On the other side of the fire is groundedness. On the other side of the flame, the pain, the frustration is elation and reward. So if you continually outrun and go home, call in sick. I, one of my book chapters just talks about this very specifically. I say, I can tell you when somebody's going to be sick. It's when they have complex lives and they created the complexity, not their career. Mm-hmm. They made something complex that was not. And once they do this, and you can watch this on the team, you can watch them create complexity. Then they get frustrated, and then all of a sudden they're sick. They had food poisoning, and it's crazy how much food poisoning happens on Mondays. Insane. And yeah. it's because they run from instead of run to. I, I had this conversation with a family member the other day. Everything we do, we're running from or running to. And if you're running from all the time, you this is a self-assessment, but if you're running from something and not gravitating to it to kick its butt and win, you're going to continue to lose because you're going to always be a cut and run. You have to literally run straight at it. If the door is on fire and you got to get to the other side, I'm kicking the door in. I'm going to the other side of that. I'm not going to run down the alley and ask for somebody to help me. I'm going to kick the door in. I'm going. So I run two things. I don't run from things. When I have my 90 day checkout, I'm telling you, I want to sit in bed and I want to, you know, drink a beer and I want to just sit there. I'm no different than anyone else. I just refuse to do that because I have a discipline around that. I go at it. I come back in. I'm like, I got to get focused. I use what we call default calendar settings. I go very methodical on my calendar. I stick to my calendar. And by the end of the day, it's game time. I'm changing everything and I write differently. I speak differently. I think differently. Yeah. I think for me and, and, and having kind of gone through this, uh, every Monday I plan a certain way because, uh, because of this, right? Because of this it's specifically because of this, because I don't want to miss a Monday. And, 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 and uh, the way that I've kind of taught myself is I want to do stuff on Mondays that I get energy from. That charges me up, that excites me, that refills my um, my empty cup, I guess. And then, you know, we have to do it. We all have to do things we don't like. I, so I, you know, I have to do reports and all that stuff. That's good. But then I, 
you know, I start with the stuff that really energizes me. So, man, I'm, I'm ready to go to work on Monday. Cause I'm like, I want to get back. I want to be, I want to do some creative, you know, cause I, I like doing stuff that are creative. And I think this, the secret to all this is, is, is really spending time and knowing what gives you energy uh, and, and then, and then jumping into that, going all into that. Right. Don't, don't stay at home. Like you, like you were saying, don't stay at home. Don't cause it's, you're not going to help yourself. And I know I've experienced it. I've sat at home for, I will say X amount of hours watching something on Netflix. And then I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we've talked, why'd about, I do that? I've, we've had these team discussions, even, you know, I say it, one of your goals has to be self-nurturing. Yeah. So you have to re- really focus on that. I'm not in judgment of whatever that is. Is it yeah. surfing? Is it, you know, riding a dune buggy? Is it race cars? Is it skydiving? I, it doesn't matter. You got to find a way to self-nurture. And some of it could be Netflix, power watching, uh, John Dutton. I, I don't know, but you have to self-nurture. <laughs> you have to self-nurture in some way. You, you yeah. get the prerogative to figure that out. But the rest of the time has to be about serving some other higher calling and those other goals. You have to have the wheel to turn and it's got to be in line. Mm -hmm. Self-nurturing is critical. You got to figure out what's the best time to do that. For me, I have all of my fundamentals. I do every single day, every day. There is no day that gets skipped. I still read the same. I still do certain things. What gets plugged into the open spots are the only thing that's different. The fundamentals never, ever change. I know that's not the normal for all of the staff. They change everything. They only do certain things Monday through Friday. But I can tell you, if you used fundamentals every single day, doesn't matter which day, fundamentals are critical to holding your feet to the fire and driving a different result. Fundamentals are critical. We call them habituals or rituals. R-I-C-H, rituals, because they'll make you rich in health and connection and wealth by staying the course. If you check out for two days every week, I'm telling you, it's like you're starting over. So keep your fundamentals every single day. We're we're halfway through, man, and there's so many things good uh, left to cover. I have so many great questions, and you know, we're really talking about um, connection with, with people, with teams. Uh, and this epidemic we've been going through as a country and really almost as a world of kind of disconnection and, 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 you know, and addressing that and how do we get through it as a team? Uh, we've had some great information so far, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the power of saying no. We always talk about yes and saying yes and yes, go all in, absolutely go in. Uh, but you know, I want to kind of talk about boundaries and setting healthy boundaries, um, but still keeping engaged and saying yes to life and new experiences. Um, and especially at work saying, yes, I want to be, I want to participate, but there are definitely times where you need to set boundaries with everyone uh, for them and for you. And I kind of wanted to chat with you on what do you, what's your belief about boundaries and what are your recommendations for leaders and helping their team? Uh, well, boundaries obviously are important to find roles in, uh, in a career, on a job, you know, in a company that those are always, they all got boundaries. There's a set of standards or, you know, process system that you follow. Um, so that inherently has a boundary on it. You know, they reference the race car. You got, you got borders there. Uh, I rode motorcycles cross country and I can tell you, you, your motorcycle goes wherever you look. It isn't where you try to steer. It's wherever you look. So you may be leaning one way, but your bike's going the other way. So you really got to have boundaries, and that is more focus-oriented uh, than probably anything else. A piece I wrote this morning was, uh, one of the pieces I wrote was about the battle is in your mind, not in the event. Mm. And it's the battles in your mind, not in the event. And that means we're fighting something in our head that doesn't truly exist. We're creating it. It's from our imagination. We're making it more complex than it actually is. So setting a border or a boundary is something you just got to define what that looks like. All opportunities in a, in a career path are simply an opportunity. Uh, raising my daughter many years ago, she's almost 30 now, but as a child, she would get irritated that people would pour so much content into her and I would say, well, honey, you, you have the, 
you have the prerogative of setting whatever that looks like, those boundaries. However, out of kindness to the individual, hear everything they have to say because you have the prerogative to just discard whatever has zero value to you later. But take it all in because there's probably some value in it to where it'll make you think differently. It'll make you want to grow or learn something. And as much as she resisted that time and again, today she thinks very differently about that. And even when it may be frustrating or irritating to hear a different perspective, she understands the importance of that. So we, in career, take in everything. If you're asked to do something, go all in. And you'll learn very quickly if it doesn't fit. But go all in and get the experience. I've moved a lot in my life. If, if I had a friend call me and say, hey, can you help me move on Saturday? I got a boundary right there, man. I'm saying <laughs> that's a solid no. Yeah, that's hard a, no. That's a solid hard <laughs> no. I'm not going to help you move. I've moved enough. I've learned a lot about it. I can, I'm strategic in packing the truck, but I'm not helping. I'll come over and cheer you on. I'll see you on Monday for when you get the back pain, but I've learned. And so there's a boundary there, and I would say yeah. no to that. Um, but I I don't say no a lot because I, I'm here to serve people, and so I, right. I, I have to pick what those things are for me and i got to be very disciplined about that because it's not normal for me to say no yeah and i think that uh that happens a lot right now with people and and boundaries and saying no um and we get into a state where we just say yes to everything including moving well i think society has been conditioned that we're supposed to have all kinds of boundaries and Mm -hmm. and i argue the fact that that's not accurate it's stop setting all these boundaries because we made the boundaries so black and white. Yes. You need to have some boundaries, but today you'll even hear the talk. Oh, they crossed this boundary. They did, you know, forget all that. Stop with all the boundaries. Make sure you limit them. Like for me, I have limited boundaries. I, I will limit how much I have to say no. It's not that I'm craving uh, being overworked. I'm just here to serve people. And if they're asking me, there's a reason. And I can either point them in a direction to get the right help if I'm not it, or I can show up and be the help. So I pick and choose those boundaries, much to my reference about motorcycle riding. I knew my boundaries. I knew how to ride that motorcycle, and I did it for many, many years. Quarter million miles, covered a lot of states. But I knew my boundaries. And so you have to know that stuff. But we've overused that word. It, it's almost like a, it's almost like a negative word now. Yeah. And it's really not, it's just, it's all about, and that's why I wanted to bring it up to you because I, I know that people need to think about it in a, in a different way. We're just, it's not talking about, it's, we're not talking about, you know, saying no to life. We're talking about saying yes, go eat, say yes, but choose things that charge you up and choose, yeah. you know, or the charge right others for you or charge others, which may charge you. Yeah. And if yeah. somebody's getting charged up, you're going to feel it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, we're talking about disconnection. And along with that, I think more than ever, uh, people are isolated and they're, they're straight up lonely. They're just friggin' lonely. I was reading a, st- a study by Cigna said the, the average person will experience loneliness three times a week. That's crazy. You know, to me, I mean, how do we help our teams to develop healthy relationships at work and home to deal with this loneliness? It's how do we make them feel connected? Well, loneliness is a perception and loneliness is not based on time or anything else. It's truly Mm -hmm. a connection. Uh, Serving at ECTLC as the chairman of the board, I've had the opportunity, tremendous opportunity, by the way, to speak with many psychologists and talk about, you know, how we're helping folks get clean and sober, get them off the streets. And about two years ago, we were really taking a deeper dive. We have about 180 children in the program. And we had groups coming in saying we need a mentor and engage these these kids. And through the process of that, I learned from the psychologist, the child psychologist that said, it really takes about 10 minutes of totally being present with a child 
to impact and change that child's life. Ten minutes. Whereas most people would say, geez, I need to spend all day with this kid. I got to do this, that, or the other thing. And the discovery of that is, is it's a profound impact if you say the right things for that individual, for that child, in 10 minutes of truly being present, you change their lives. And I remember after I learned this, I would think back and I reflect, you know, reflect back on my own childhood, who impacted me, who changed my life, who gave me one of those core values that's still in me today. It didn't take all day to do that. They did it in four or five minutes and they did it in just a profound way, which was unintentional. They were literally just trying to help me. So we got to be this loneliness thing. We've got to be present with each other. Put these things down. These things are deadly. (laughs) They make us more and more and more demanding. Dave Ramsey, you know, the other day when we were with him, with his, uh, his group, he, he was talking about go and connect, you know, don't use the, the food apps to get your lunch, go to the restaurant and pick up your own food. Yes. It takes you a couple more minutes. It saves you five bucks, could have saved you 30 minutes of your time. But the reality is, is connecting to people are, it's critical. Who are you going to impact if you go get your own sandwich? Maybe a lot, maybe somebody driving down the road, certainly the person taking your money the person cooking the meal, everybody has the opportunity to impact. He says, don't use the apps to get things delivered to your porch. Go get it. Support local businesses. Go to the store. That's truly getting rid of loneliness. It's getting rid of loneliness for self and some of those folks you're going to impact as soon as you get off your keister and go out there and actually meet people. (laughs) So that, that's the loneliness thing. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I do really well alone. The other day I was sitting at, uh, at a steakhouse. My wife called me and she was in another state and she says, where, where are you at? And I said, well, I'm at dinner. Who'd you go with? I'm by myself. This is outstanding. I got 30 minutes here that I'm going to eat this meal. I'm going to do some reading and some research. I'm going to do some studying and nobody's here bugging me right now. And oddly enough, Sarah was my server. I'm pretty sure we're going to be spending holidays together. She's just a sweet, sweet lady. <laughs> uh, the bus boy was Tommy. And so I had the opportunity to meet a lot of people. So to the point, I'm not lonely when I'm out there for that 30 minute meal. I had the opportunity to connect some people and impact their lives and they impacted mine. So loneliness is real today, but we got to take these guards down. We got to just tell people, Hey, I care about you. Thank you for your service today. You know, just be genuine and authentic and we can impact lives and our loneliness goes away as soon as we help somebody else with theirs. I love that. And I think um, that was just on my thought process here is that you're bringing up uh, ECTLC. And I, I think if we just stop with serving ourselves so much and maybe help others, a lot of that loneliness goes away and gives us opportunity to connect with people. And it doesn't matter. It it could be your server, (laughs) you know, it could be the bus boy. It could be the other day uh, I had lunch with a friend and I haven't seen her in three years, three years. And it was so good to see her uh, and reconnect. But even on the way in the, the person at the front desk, to your point, she looks so freaking lonely. So I just started to have a conversation with her. And it was like, she hasn't talked to anyone in a while, you know, just like, here you go. All right. You know, you can feel that with people. So yeah, every single opportunity out there, just like you're saying is, is uh, an opportunity to connect with other people. Yeah. And loneliness, loneliness stops. We can all make it go away. We got to do it. It's been coming on for years mm-hmm. and you know, people are driving this steak, you know, and there, here's the line. Don't cross this line type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I was telling somebody, I don't know, last year or so, but I was always scared as, as a CEO to hug somebody and I was conditioned. I was conditioned that you don't do that. You're a CEO. You don't do that. And I'm like, man, but I I just want to hug somebody. I, I want to be hugged. I want to hug. Yeah. And there's a, there's a line there. I got responsibilities, you know, I got legal responsibilities that I are complex. 
but I can tell you, I, I still use my judgment and it's, I hug who I think I can hug. And sometimes they just hug me and I, I don't, I don't have the opportunity to go to HR. So that ain't happening. <laughs> I just embrace the hug and I am, a, I am a hugger. I'm a yeah. hugger. Put that on the, yeah. put that on the TV, man. I'm a hugger. I like to be hugged and I want to give hugs and it, we've got to get rid of all the rules around this. We've got to stop being offended. Just saying, I love you, man. I just, I just love you. I want to be able to be, yeah. you know, hug and just say that. It's interesting. This whole disconnection I think has also created this uh, culture of uh, you, oh, you're over there. Just back up, back up, man. Don't touch me. Don't brush up against me. Don't, whoa. You know, yeah. these crazy boundaries and we're, and, yeah. and I think it's a side effect really of all this, of, of this crap. And, and it kind of leads me to this, you know, it's a little, just this uh, phone here, you're, you're, you're bringing it up. And I thought it was super relevant because we live in a 24 hour, seven day a week life of distraction. Boop, ding, bing, everything coming up, new email, bing, you know, and, and <laughs> How do you, and you were talking about being present and I think that's so, so important, but how do we and um, help leaders or how do we, what advice would you give for them about getting people to be present? Well, much to my point earlier, it doesn't, you don't have to be present for 24 solid hours. Right. Chances are you're going to drive the significant other or that other person nuts if you nuts. try to stay <laughs> However, if you are present for that few minutes that they are speaking and you're hearing them not correcting, changing, fixing, if you are present for those 20, 30, 40 minutes, wow, what an impact. Truly what an impact. So be present. Be super present. Don't stare at your phone. Don't look at it. Put it upside down. That's what I do. I just turn it upside down when, it, when it's near me. It's... uh. And he said in the meetings, uh, just this week, even I watched people pick up their phones during our meetings and people also heard my phone and I never flipped my phone back over. Yeah. Uh, I do occasionally just cause I have an emergency that's coming in that I, that I was aware of. Um, and, but I'll tell everybody that I'm expecting a call and I'm going to take this call. I, other than that, I stay present and I can hear it tells my phone says, you know, you have a text message or whatever. I don't pick it up during the meeting. I keep it upside down and I don't do it at home either. And the self-serving people sometimes will be like, you didn't answer my call. You didn't answer my text. And I just, all I can say is, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I didn't because it was about somebody else. It wasn't about me responding to that text or that phone call. It was me being present for somebody else, or I was in some other need case. They were my priority, not, not a computer in my pocket. Yeah. And so being very present for the individual responding to a text, that's great. If you have the opportunity to do that because somebody on the sending side needed something, they think they did. The person in front of you is and should be your priority. Should yeah. be your priority, not the text, not the phone call coming in on your on your computer. Yeah, I'm I'm guilty. I've done it, and even in some of our meetings, when that starts happening, I, and I'm like, oh crap, uh, uh, and I'm like, and, and then in a second, then I'm lost. I'm like, okay, I gotta take it, and I do. I'll take it and I'll move it, and, I, and I'll put it away. I'll turn it upside down because I know I'm not being present. I'm like, crap. Yeah, this uh, I got I got I got to tune in here, and you've caught me. You're like, I'm like, Sean, <laughs> like, uh. Crap, that was a customer. Hang on, we just put it I'll, aside, though. I'll stop we put it aside. I stop meetings once in a while. I just say, listen, yeah. I think what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is really important. Yeah. The phone isn't. I'll wait until yeah. you're ready. And then, then I'll right. go back to pouring what I have to say. But uh, I'll pause because there's a disruption in, in the content delivery. And I don't want that. I want you to hear or I want the individual in the meeting to That's hear right. the content and have the opportunity to grow. And a phone or a pocket computer is disruption. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they are. They certainly are. And I think our attention spans are not helpful, <laughs> you know, and we really have to kind of work. I mean, we've grown accustomed to everything in quick, quick burst. You know, we have videos uh, from YouTube now that are shorts because they're they're just not short enough. We need, we need, a, we need them even shorter. 
Um, so, and, and, you know, and we live in a hair on fire and communicate in a very fast manner with people because we have to, the, the information needs to be moving quickly, but do you feel that this is a challenge for leaders today dealing in, in, with such a short attention spans and, and how do we help our teams? It's not necessary to be present, but how we help them focus in and, and, uh, and expand those attention spans. Well, I mean, I created a business that is predicated on hair on fire. Yeah. And it's a service business. It's 365, 24 hours a day. And it, I created it. And so that is at my core of delivery. That's what I do. So 37 years of just all day long, 24 hours a day, always meeting somebody else's need. And finding people that can multitask and be able to serve at that level, but also disciplined enough to be able to turn that off when they need to be truly present. That's the phone reference in a meeting, or that's the phone at a, at a luncheon with a client or a, or a family member is being able to have discipline enough, knowing that we're a 24 hour operation, that it doesn't ever shut off. We're fixers. We fix, we solve problems, but we also got to make sure we're present to solve the problem that's directly in front of us and that means be present and that takes 10 or 15 20 minutes but shut everything else off and be very present everyone else is hair on fire i get it but you're going to follow up in 30 minutes and i'm telling you the result will be exactly the same yeah so it's a discipline you gotta build that muscle flex it you gotta flex it you gotta flex be able it, baby to turn the phone upside down turn it off it's, do whatever you gotta do flex it Awesome, man. Well, we are, we're at the end. We're going to, I'm going to wrap up. We get some great things, man. We covered a lot of stuff. I think uh, some great advice on, on connecting with your team and helping them, you know, beat this epidemic of loneliness and, and distraction and, uh, and just, uh, just loving each other, man. I love it. Be part of the cure, not the problem. Yeah, man. Be part be of the it. change you want to be. Be the change you want to <laughs> be. You would see. Yeah. Who said that? Awesome, my friend. I don't remember. Be the change you want to see. BC. I don't know. It's a we, great we should part. probably leave that one alone. But uh, <laughs> contribute to others. What you what you see. You yes. need. Stop. Stop whining about things and start embracing things. All things. All experiences. Start embracing them because it'll change you. And you'll find that you will dislike people less and you'll start liking them a whole lot more. And you in turn will feel loved and appreciated. That's what it's all about, my friend. Awesome. For everyone out there on your podcast platforms, if you're liking the value bombs that Jim is dropping and that we're bringing you, hey, subscribe, give us a like, leave us a comment. If you're watching us on, on YouTube, don't forget. Hit that little bell for notifications so you can get new video no, uh, videos to you and you can and get the latest content and for on leadership. And and Jim, thank you so much for being here, man. It's great to have you on Leadership Fridays. It's my it's one of the things I look forward to all month long, man. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then for those who want to learn more about you uh, and connect with you, ask you questions, uh, what's the best way to do that? Can they maybe link it? LinkedIn's a great way. Track me down, see what I'm out there doing. Uh, send me a connection. I'll connect up. Love the engaging conversation. Thank you. Awesome, man. We'll put that in the show notes so people can connect with you on LinkedIn. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time.